The next question is about uh, belts uh, that are IPF approved. Um, belts are very much a piece of equipment that rely on personal preference. So you'll find a lot of people that like certain types of belts or, uh, you know, just all kinds of different things. So rather than tell you what I think, what I, what I personally like, let me see if I can give you something more useful so you can get a belt that you like. Um, the first up, there's prong belts. Uh, single prong, double prong, and it's pretty much standard acceptance now that uh, a single prong belt is a little bit easier to deal with. With that said, I had a double prong belt for probably the first 15 years of my career, and it was never a problem. So um, if you just like double prong better, go that way. You know, In terms of the belt width, a standard powerlifting belt is four inches in width. Uh, so it's the maximum width that's allowed by the rules, and that's typically what you see. Now, if you are someone who has a short torso, so if you're in a lighter weight class uh, or you're just a shorter person in general, you may find that that causes some pinching. Uh, pinching at the hips or pinching on your ribs or between your pelvis, um, if you have something like that, you may want to look into getting a three inch belt. So something that's not quite so wide, so something a little bit narrower. And I, I've heard of even some people, very short people, going with a, a two inch belt. I don't think that you need to go that far for most people most of the time, but it's, it's an option that's out there. Um, most people are going to use something like a two inch belt for holding down a bench shirt uh, so that it impacts their arch minimally. But if you're not an equipped lifter, that's a non-issue. Uh, the next is lever belts. A lot of people like lever belts and you are able to get a lever belt much tighter. Uh, if you have the extra money to spend, the SBD belts are nice because you get the benefit of the tightness of a lever belt uh, without needing a, a screwdriver to make adjustments to it. Uh, with a standard lever belt, you need to adjust the tightness of the belt. There's only one tightness. And to make any adjustments to that tightness, you need a screwdriver to, to move uh, the lever. The SBD belt uh, changed the design of the lever so that they can overcome that problem. Um, there are some drawbacks to the SBD belt, though. Uh, they tend to be fairly minor. One is that the edges of the belt are rather sharp, um, but I know some people who've overcome that. They've um, kind of softened up those edges. Um, the belt itself is really stiff, so it takes a while to break in unless you're more aggressive. Like, I'm pretty aggressive about how I break in my belts. Um, so there's that that you can do. The inner lining uh, is red, and it uh, at least had a tendency to bleed on clothes. So you would end up with like a, a red dyed uh, stripe around your shirt um, if you tend to, to sweat a lot. Um, so those are, there are a few drawbacks, but you know, really those are more like break-in problems. Once you get the belt broken in, it's usually not an issue anymore. But again, with very small people, uh, the, the size of the buckle can be an issue uh, if it, you know, hits the legs or uh, something like that. Um, so that's a potential problem. And then again, we're talking about a four inch belt. Um, if those are not issues for you and you don't mind the break in process, then it's a really good way to go because you get the, again, the tightness of a lever with the adjustableness of uh, a more traditional prong belt. The belt that I wear is a Wallander belt and they have a, a unique buckle <clears throat> where you don't pull the belt back. Let me tilt the camera a little bit. You don't, you don't pull the belt back and then put the prong in like you do with, a, say, a dress belt. With this one, you suck in your stomach and you push the belt together and there's a, the, the buckle just latches forward like snake fangs, you know. But the benefit of that is that when it's time to take it off, you just un, unsnap it. It's uh, really easy to take off. I can get that belt as tight as I want it. Um, and there's, there's a quick release option the same way as there is with a lever. So it, that belt also is a little bit lightweight. Um, I'm not sure why, but I like it, you know, I mean, having heavy things is kind of part of being a power lifter, but having something in my kit that's, that's not quite huge, heavy and obnoxious is, 
is pretty nice. So uh, if you're, again, that belt tends to be a little bit more pricey than some of the other ones out there, but if you're willing, if you got the money to spend, I really recommend a Wallander belt. I really like them. Um, again, they're, they're the issues with width, again, uh, if you need a skinnier belt, that really limits your options. But with that said, most powerlifters for a long time have gotten by with four-inch belts. Uh, it's just more recently that some people have found that their performance is better with narrower belts. So uh, your mileage may vary with all of that. So I hope that's helpful. Uh, let me know if you've got any additional questions.